Welcome, and thank you for tuning in to Emerge's weekly interview series with women elected officials. We are excited to be joined by Sacramento City Councilwoman Mai Vang, who is also an Emerge California alumna. As the Councilwoman for District 8, she has been focused on amplifying the voices of her community, prioritizing public health, and ensuring that South Sacramento businesses thrive. As the first Asian American elected to, sorry, Asian woman elected to Sacramento City Council, Councilwoman Vague is committed to ensuring environmental and food justice and producing more affordable housing so that families can stay happy and safe. Councilwoman, thank you so much for joining us today. Good morning, Ryan. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to, to be on here today and proud uh, Emerge alumni. So I'm excited to be on here today. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Definitely love to hear that. Um, to kick things off, I would love to hear a bit about what your typical day looks like as a member of the council. What what are your day to day responsibilities look like? Yeah, well, it varies from day to day, but it's definitely pack uh, jam pack from eight is probably eight o'clock. Um, and usually I, uh, you know, I have a scheduler. So, you know, I just go wherever they tell me to go. But um, I have back to back Zoom meetings, site visits. Um, it really varies day to day. But my calendar is pretty uh, packed. Unless it's a Tuesday, um, then I know I have a council meeting. But even Tuesdays are incredibly busy um, because uh, last minute briefings on any agenda items um, and uh, really prepping for council and uh, counting my votes on items, right? And figuring out what I need to do to, to push an agenda that's going to be for the people. So um, yeah, every day is pretty packed. And even on weekends, a lot of community events um, that are within, you know, COVID restrictions, right? Mm -hmm. um, mask on, uh, physical physical distancing, but out there uh, in the community um, all the times, 24 seven. Um, but I love this. I love this work. I, I live in the community. I grew up here as well. And so um, for me, it's just, it's also just natural because uh, this is, this is where I grew up and this is where I live. So. I think it's always so interesting when folks are like, oh, city council, it's like, oh, they have a meeting once per week. That's what they do when there's always so much around the periphery. Right. And so much of it that's, I don't want to say like maybe more crucial than the in-person meetings, but so crucial to the work that you're doing as a whole, right? Getting out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everything from your basic three, one, one calls, right? Like, you know, um, illegal dumping to youth programming, to addressing um, food insecurity, to, um, you know, a talk, uh, discussing agenda items that are coming to council. Um, I also hold weekly office hours uh, meetings as well. And so folks are always booking those office hours and I'm on Zoom waiting for folks and, and, and having conversations with residents and community folks. So, uh, yeah, my calendar is pretty bad. I try to be intentional about blocking out some time, definitely for lunch. Right. Um, um, and then I have a dog as well, and she barks at me when it's time to go outside and to use the restroom. So she reminds me that I need to go take a walk. <laughs> so so it's good to have a dog as well. But usually my my schedule is back to back Zoom meetings. So. Well, so glad you could get, grab some time with us today. Absolutely. My next question is around why did you run for this office initially? And what have been, you know, maybe just one or two of your proudest accomplishments? Yeah. Um, you know, I don't. Growing up, I never really saw myself running for office, right? Um, you know, you always get these projects when you are in third and fourth grade. What do you want to be when you grow up? And I always answered that I wanted to be like mom and dad. I wanted to take care of family and community. Um, and so it wasn't something that I had planned when, when I was a little girl because um, I didn't actually even know what elected official was or what a Democrat was or Republican. All I wanted to do was take care of my family and my community. And I grew up I grew up in a very big um, Hmong household and the oldest is 16 children. And so at a very young age, I had to learn very quickly how to take care of my brothers and sisters. Um, and so fast forward, you know, I grew up in South Sacramento. I was the first in my family to go to college. Um, I went to the University of San Francisco um, and then took a year off. I did some policy work through the Barbara Jordan Health Policy Scholars Program, went to UCLA for grad school and got my master's in public health policy and Asian American studies. When I came back to Sacramento, I started working for a nonprofit, but just starting recognizing when I moved back into the neighborhood, I could have two, you know, graduate degrees, but what good is a college degree when you come back to your community and everyone is still struggling, right? Um, in terms of health outcomes, educational outcomes. And I thought to myself, um, you know, it's going to be so important for me to be involved with the community, you know, given everything that I've learned from from college, everything that all my organizing um, that I've done uh, back in SoCal and in the Bay Area. Um, and so I started a nonprofit um, 
Hmong Innovating Politics. It was a grassroots organization, money in a shoebox underneath someone's bed, uh, really organizing to try to stop school closure about seven Seven, eight years ago, um, there was massive school closures in South Sacramento, and many of the Hmong parents um, came to HIP, Hmong Innovative Politics, and really wanted to figure out what they could do to stop the school closures. Uh, many of them didn't know who their school board member was. They didn't know really how, how to navigate um, just really the, the school system, right, or, or school board meetings. And so HIP organized parents to really be engaged and involved in the political process of their child's education. But as you know, when you think about issues that impact a specific community like the Hmong community, um, school closures, right, health outcomes, it's not just something that impacts the Hmong community, but all communities, especially in South Sacramento, uh, where it is, um, you know, very vulnerable, uh, low income communities of color. Uh, we were able to organize hundreds of parents, not just Hmong, but black, Latino, uh, whites, all indigenous communities uh, around the school closures. Um, and during that time, we were looking for someone to run for office. And um, many of the parents were like, why don't you consider running for office? And I was like, no, I love organizing. You know, let's find a parent, right, to run for office. And it took several times until I decided that I was actually going to run. Um, and so I threw my hat in the race um, and ran for school board and served a full term. Um, but what I also learned very quickly as a school board member is that while we could do the education inside the classroom, which is uh, just as important, what happens outside of the classroom is just equally important in terms of student health outcomes and educational outcomes, right? That our, our, our neighborhoods and our neighborhood schools are only strong as each other, right? And so I decided to throw my hat um, in the city council race really to bring more resources to our students and families and into our neighborhoods um, and and ran um, last year was sworn in in December um, it was a really competitive race and now I'm on the Sacramento City City Council and um, just just hustling uh, our hashtag during the campaign was heart and hustle and it is still not in heart now heart and hustle um, just because we're still in the pandemic and COVID recovery has been one of my top priorities that is actually wow thank you for all that work you've been doing and I love hearing how different components of people's lives get like woven together to kind of create this wave that crashes them into public service, right? Even though they may have not been seeing mm -hmm. that for themselves growing up. Um, but I do want to talk a bit about the pandemic, right? Can you talk a bit about the value and role of local leaders as we've navigated the pandemic? How has your community been affected and what must we do to recover? Absolutely. Um, so, you know, the pandemic hit when I was actually campaigning and we had to put a put it on a hiatus. Um, and we actually shifted our campaign uh, to actually do meal deliveries for seniors. So instead of campaigning, we ended up just actually hitting, using the campaign infrastructure to actually try to meet the needs of the community. Um, and as soon as I was sworn in, um, COVID uh, was, recovery was definitely my top priority, especially the area that I represent. I represent a zip code um, 95823 that has the like, highest cases of COVID uh, in the city and in the county of Sacramento. And so, and there's, a, there's, a, there's several reasons why. One, um, we have many essential workers in our district. So when folks had to work from home, many of our residents weren't able to do that um, because they were essential workers. The other piece is we live in um, really diverse and multi-generational household. And so when one person is infected with COVID, it spreads to the whole entire family. And we have huge families here in South Sacramento. Um, and so there's several reasons why our cases are so high, but also access right to education and also to vaccine. I remember when the vaccine first rolled out, it was concentrated in areas that were more wealthier. And while I had the zip code with the highest case of COVID, we didn't see the vaccine, any pop-ups here. And so um, along with um, community advocates and organizers on the ground, um, you know, I fought to make sure that we actually had a community clinic right here in South Sacramento at the Pinnell Center. Um, and we've been going on for really, we're probably the longest standing community clinic. Now we're here every Friday from 9 to uh, 9 to 11, um, all volunteer run, right? 40 volunteers that show up show up every Friday to make sure that we protect our communities. And we launched uh, the SAFE Coalition, Sacramento Alliance for Vaccine Equity, made of 20 plus organizations from, um, from the Black community, from the Latino com community, from our very diverse Asian American Pacific Islander community, our Native American indigenous community, um, because, and we meet every Tuesday every Tuesday since the clinic launch to strategize and re-strategize what's working, what's not working, how are we messaging the vaccine, how do we protect our communities. And now what we're doing is we have a standing clinic, but we also um, are actually going into the neighborhoods and knocking on doors and bring the vaccine literally to their house. 
Um, and for me, a lot of it comes from my, pu my public health training um, um, at UCLA, right, that you have to meet the community where they're at. And uh, at the same time, it's really about creating those type of conditions so that our families can thrive. You have to bring the vaccines to them. You have to think about the built environment, transportation, all of that. Um, and so I'm uh, really grateful that we that we have this clinic, uh, but there's still a lot of work ahead, right? Recovery. Um, Vaccine is just one part of it, uh, but it's the recovery piece that's going to that's going to need um, a lot of resources and support to make sure that our families can come out of this happier, stronger and healthier. Thank you so much. Uh, you are obviously clearly deeply connected to your community, right? You've gone over some of this, but you were born and raised in Sacramento. You have a wide range of experience from the city school board to having an education in biology and sociology. You've already touched on this a bit about, you know, how your background in public health is coming to serve you um, as we're trying to get through this COVID pandemic together. And something I love about Emerge is we really encourage women to like run with them, their full selves and their full stories as their authentic selves. So I was wondering if you could share maybe just one more story about how your past experiences have informed your priorities on the city council. Yeah, um, there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of experience, but I really think about just my time as an organizer and why I'm an elected. I'm an advocate elected, how I see it, right? As an organizer, I will always have the heart of an organizer. And I think about the night during a school board meeting when I was an organizer before I was a school board, waiting till one o'clock, uh, one o'clock a.m. to speak. And I remember when we didn't win that vote and they did vote to close, um, the majority of schools were able to save three. And I remember, I remember, um, some of the parents crying and uh, some of the organizers actually in tears um, that their school was going to be closed. And in that moment, I, I told myself, like, no matter what happens in the future, um, that in that moment, like, we're never going to stop fighting. Right. And it could be as a, in a form of being an organizer. It could be whatever your position is in the future that you always have to center community, those closest to the struggle um, and to continue the fight. Right. And that's that's what we're in right now. We're in a really pivotal moment. Um, right. The decisions we make will impact future generations. Um, and um, I, I'm super cognizant of that, right? The decisions I make is that there could be uh, unattended consequences. So how are we truly involving the community in the process? So everything I do, um, I always make sure that, you know, I've consulted with my elders, uh, with our community members. Um, and I think that's the best way to lead is to lead with the people. And I always say, um, you know, that the seat that I sit in right now doesn't belong. It didn't belong to the former council member. It's, it also doesn't belong to me. It truly belongs to the people. My job as a councilwoman is actually to be a good steward of community engagement and to help lead and guide, but co-lead with the community. Um, these solutions that I'm voting for, these ideas are not mine, but they're actually from the community. It's just so clear that that mantra of heart and hustle is like so <laughs> core to you and the work that you're doing. It really resonant. Um, my final question, I can't let you go without asking, what is your advice for other women who are thinking about running for office? Yeah, I would say, you know, this is really cliche, but just do it. And here's the reason why win or lose, if you decide to run, not if, but when you decide to run, you have you have already won. And I say that because, you know, your existence is going to change the dynamic of the race. Your opponent might not carry issues that you care about. And if you when, when you get to the finish line and you, let's say that you didn't get the votes to win the seat, you have already won because your platform has been centered, mm -hmm. right? And you're changing that dynamic of the race. So I would say just do it, just run because your existence and you running for office is changing the political landscape already. Now we're gonna do everything we can to make sure you, you win, but just know that even if you don't quote unquote win, right? that you have already won by making that decision and putting yourself out there um, to really fight for what you believe in. And that's the best thing that you can do is just, just jump in and run. And as soon as you turn 18, I always even tell young folks, right? Um, you know, um, that they're, they're prepared more than ever to run for office as soon as you turn 18, because uh, you won't know if you're prepared unless you jump right into it. And so I would say, if you're considering running for office right now, just, just do it, just do it because you're going to win. You're going to win in so many ways already. So, yeah. I love that so much. Thank you so much, Councilwoman, for spending a bit of time with us today. Thank you, everyone who is tuning in, who joined us for another episode of Emerge at Work. 
please subscribe to our channel for more updates and for more great conversations with Emerge Leader from coast to coast. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.